Okay, welcome back to the third video of Project 3. Hopefully we'll be able to finish steps 13 to 19 of the Project 3 Office 2013 Excel Chapter 3 Visualizing Data Assignment. To begin step 13, we're on the bar chart from step 12. We need to apply 11 point font size according to the instructions to the category axis value axis and legend for the bar chart. So all we have to do is click on the area. So first we want the category axis. That's right here. Let's click on the chart and then right there. You see how the category axis is sort of emphasized or highlighted. There's a box around it with the uh, dots in the corners. All we want to do is we want to change the font. So we go up here to the home tab and the font group we make that size uh, 0.11 and that just increases the fonts. We do the same for the value axis which is right here. Let me make this a little bit larger so you can see. I'll make it 100%. Okay, so we did that for there. Now we just focus on the, uh, let's see, the value axis. It's right there and we make that 11 point font as well. So from 9, same thing, go to 11. Okay. Perfect. And also they want the legend for the bar chart. So the legend's right below that. We just click on that and then we make that 11 point as well. Okay, just makes it a little bit bigger. We can save our data, control S. And that's, I guess we're done with step 13. Okay, step 14 is a little tricky. It took me a little while to figure it out. What we have to do is use the axis options to display the value axis in units of thousands, set the major units to 500, apply the number format with one decimal place for the bar chart. So I'll take this step by step again. Let's see, we click on the box and we want to, f uh, we click on this and we want to format the axis. So let's see, we want to format the value axis, so not the category axis but this axis so we kinda have to just highlight it to the best of our ability and then right click it see how it says format axis we highlighted it um, and then we right clicked it and then format axis pops up we just click on that so that format axis box pops up what we have to do is first display unit so this is what gets a little confusing uh, the, based on the instructions. It says display the value axis in units of thousands. So right here it says display units on the value axis in thousands. So right now it's at none. So we go to thousands and click on that. Now it doesn't look like it's supposed to. It has just numbers there. But just wait. We'll, we'll get through it and then it'll make a little more sense. So We've done that and now set the major units to 500. So as you can see here the units, set the major units to 500. We just need to delete that and type in 500. Okay. That's good. And then we scroll down. And then in addition to that, apply the number format. So right here we go to number. And as you see, as you can see, by adjusting the major units to 500, it sort of doubled up the um, the numbers here but we're gonna fix that uh, pretty soon so we click on number and then we scroll down a little bit and basically what we want is a number format we're right now we're at custom so we click on that and we go to number and we want one decimal place right now we're at zero so we click one we change that to one and we go to add and see now it makes a little more sense. Now we have 0 and then 0 0.51, 1.52 all the way to 8.5. I guess it's incremented. Okay, now that we finished that step, we can move on. So I'm going to close this down. And now we're on step 15, which requires us to use the axis options to format the category axis. So right now we're going to focus on category axis so that the category labels are in reverse order. So if we right click on that 
and we go to actually we're not on the axis so we have to kind of click over if that works yep instead of clicking more on the labels you have to click closer to this line it's a little tricky that took me a little while to figure out but by right clicking close to the line you get format access that's what you want because we're actually not formatting the category headings or the labels but more more the access so the format access box opens and we want to format the category access using access options so right now we're in access options we scroll we uh, scroll down a little bit and within the uh, this is the access options as you can see there's a box called categories in reverse order so we click on that and what that does is it switches the order of the categories so before it was opposite now um, I think it's in alphabetical order ascending so it's A and then to Z on the bottom so just by clicking that categories in reverse order button okay now I'm going to close that down and we're moving on to step 16 this is similar to what we did in the last Excel assignment we have to create a footer on each worksheet and it's not too difficult for this worksheet we kind of just make sure the worksheets highlighted and then we go to page layout and then page uh, the page layout tab in the toolbar and page setup group we click on that and then it brings up the page setup options uh, box we go to header and footer and custom footer the left section we want exploring series so we type X exploring series in the center section we want sheet name code so that's file name sheet name and in the right section we want the file name code so here's the file name code we click OK and to make sure that we did it correctly all you do is click print preview so you click preview and as you can see it shows exploring series the sheet name right there whatever you change it to and the file name by by default I guess so we can go back click the back button or the arrow button and now we have to create a similar custom footer on the data chart so we go back to data and you can just click anywhere in the chart and then what we want to do is page layout tab of the toolbar and then page setup group we want header footer custom footer same thing we type exploring series and then the center section we do sheet name code and on the right side we do file name code click OK and we can even print preview this one so we click it and as you can see we have the exploring series data the name of the sheet and the file right there in the corner we can go back by clicking this button in the top corner and that's step number 16 okay now we're on step 17 all we have to do is apply landscape orientation for the data worksheet so right now we're in the data worksheet we can just click on the data worksheet and go to orientation we're in the page layout tab of the toolbar the page setup group and orientation we just apply it's in portrait now we apply landscape and as you can see it's good so it's on landscape okay step 18 requires us to set 0.2 inch left right top and bottom margins for the data worksheet to do this first we make sure we're on the page layout tab of the toolbar and we want to focus on margins so there's a button right here for margins we click on that and since point two isn't one of the selections 
I guess it is. It's a, this is the last custom setting, but normally we have to set it. So we just go to down here to custom margins, and right now it's showing the top is 0.75. We have to decrease the left, right, top, and bottom to 0.2. So let's go. Let's use this arrow button here. Go down to 0.2, left, and right. 0.2 and bottom and top. Okay, this one we have to just make it like that. We hit the use the keypad. Same thing here. It's 0.25. We just make it 0.2. So now that we have 0.2 inch margins on the left, right, top, and bottom of the worksheet, we click OK. and change the scaling so that the worksheet fits on only one page. So right now the worksheet because of its size may kind of fill more than one page so what we do is we change the scaling so that the worksheet fits on only one page. We go to the page layout tab, the one we're in, the scale to fit group and all we do is the width is on automatic so it's based on whatever amount of data is in the worksheet we want to limit that to one page so we just click that one page and we do the same for height to one page okay and that should put the data on one page we hit save control s now if you want you can go to print preview and make sure it's on one page but should be good now we're on the last step which would be to upload we have to ensure that the worksheets are correctly named so step 19 our workshop our worksheet rather um, is correctly named data and bar chart and place in the following order in the workbook so bar chart comes first right there bar chart and then data we want to save the workbook, which we already did. Save it again. You can click that. Okay, it's saved. And it's saved as a correct title: Exploring underscore e03 underscore greater underscore h1 dot xlsx. That's basically what it was downloaded as. So we got it saved. We close the workbook. Okay, now all we have to do is submit it. So we click on let's see we timed out so we have to re-log in one moment okay so what I have did again is return to my IT lab log in with username and password navigate from the home page to this course and course materials I'm gonna scroll down to project 3 and click on this circle with the, the options button and I'm gonna go to open now we've already downloaded the files we need to upload the completed file so we click on that we browse for our file wherever we've saved it to the desktop or to a flash drive or if you left it in a downloads folder locate where you've where you saved it that's why it's important to remember where and then click the upload button once you've uploaded the file the last step that's required I believe is to press the finish submit for grading and my IT lab is pretty good about walking you through the steps so that's it and thank you for watching and tune in next time for the next uh, video regarding the next assignment. Thank you. Bye.